Hello, guys. Good evening. How are you? Hi, Hi. teacher. Hi. What about you? What is that music? Is it me? Yeah, I think it was something that I was open on my computer. I'm sorry, that was so strange. I was like, who is adding some rhythm to her classes? I'm doing pretty good, sorry, I didn't answer that. How about you? How's your week going? My week was pretty good. That's really good. And we're just halfway through. So you still have a few more days to have an even more amazing week. Okay, we're just waiting for Sophie. There is somebody else joining us today whose name is Sophie. Okay, okay let's see if she's gonna join us like in a minute. If not, we're gonna start with our class for today. Hello, Fabri, see you there. Hello, Ale, see you there as well. Hi, teacher. Okay, hey, Sophie just texted me that she's having issues with her Wi-Fi. Okay, now let's go ahead and start. Um, okay, guys, so as, I, as I was saying, well, good evening. I hope you're doing wonderful. Um, for today, we're going to start. We're going to have a lot of things. But first of all, but and I really like today's class because we're going to be talking a lot about health and the different types of health that are out there. Okay? So let me go ahead and start with it. What we're gonna be doing as the first activity is, you are going to show me what you can do, which I'm sure it's a lot of things. So I'm going to give you a specific topic and you're going to carry out research in regards to that, okay? What is specifically you may wonder, well, wonder no more. Cause you're gonna be carrying out research in regards to that specific topic and telling me or telling us, because you're gonna be presenting for the whole class. You're gonna be telling us, first of all, what is it? Second, how can it be affected in a negative way? And third, ways or good practices to improve that specific type of health, okay? Um, but without any further ado, let me go ahead and assign to you the different types of health that we're gonna be doing, okay? Okay, let me just go ahead and Okay, I believe Tom, you were the one who really likes sports, right? Okay. So Tom, you're gonna be in charge of physical health. So what you what you have to do is pretty much you have to do research, carry our research in regards to it, and you have to I mean, even though for physical health, we believe it's very obvious, but still, the idea is that you come up with a small presentation where you talk about what physical health is, uh, ways in which our physical health can be affected. Maybe it can be, you could even look for ways in which they are very, how can I say, like hidden. Like we don't know that those things are really damaging our physical health. And also like tips and tricks on how to improve our physical health, okay? That'll be for Tam, then let me go ahead and see. Um, Tanya, Tanya, I believe that you should be working with mental health. I would love for you to tackle that and see your take on that. I think that'll be really cool for you. Also, because I like the, the thing that you have on the back of your room, which looks like a mandala. So that's why I was like, like very zen. So I'm gonna give you that. Uh, based on that. 
Um, then Ale, Ale, I'm gonna give you social health. And Fabri, Fabri, I'm gonna give you um, environmental health. What is environmental health? Um, ways in which it can be affected and how to improve it or how to, or yeah, how to improve uh, the environmental health, okay? Questions, comments. Remember, let, let me go ahead and write the questions on the chat, just in case that you may wonder. Wait, what is it? How can it be affected in a negative or positive way? And the other question was ways in Okay, there you go. The idea is that you create um like I don't know like a five minute presentation or so, um where you pre pretty much present that specific type of help. To put it together, I was thinking to give you around. Let's just start with twenty minutes. Would that be okay? Okay, so it's already six fifteen. Let's have until six thirty five to work on it. Of course, I'm gonna be here every step of the way. So any question, any concern, any doubt, uh, anything that you need, you can let me know. Uh, but let's work on that. And at 6.35, we can start with the presentations um, to later to later move to uh, the following part of the class, okay? Teacher, <laughs> sorry, but yes. we have to do some presentation like in Canva or something like that, no? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. That's what I was saying. Uh, teacher. Yes, tell me. No, no, uh, it's not related with the presentation. It's because I wanted to know if you have any new about the book. The, yeah, um, they told me that supposedly uh, in these days you should be getting the book. That's what they told me because to actually, ah, sorry, today actually we got a message from the coordinator telling us that yeah, there were some issues with the book, but that they, they are being sent right now. So you should be getting it very soon. Uh, if you haven't received it, please check on your spam folder or junk folder because sometimes the email gets there. If it's not there by Friday, please let me know to in the chat so I can go ahead and let the coordinator know. Thanks. You're most welcome, Ali. Thank you for asking, actually. everything that around us and also the people the health relationship with all of them and um, um for example things like nature and things related to it and um the main uh, goal to achieve it is promoting um well-being in all people and, and making them feel freely and naturally uh, and, or making them feel freely to develop in the environment they, they live and not exceeding um, all the things that they have in their control. So having a rational um, use of all these uh, sources or resources they have. Um, some limitations or things that can affect it are um, like in like uh, an emotional or or mental mental area or in this aspect, we can say that the environment environmental health can be affected when we try to, um, exceed our own liberty by damaging uh, others people uh, freedom for because it tends to make people like um, feel um, not very secure or very well in the place they live because they are worried about what is going to happen to them 
because, um, for example, the example that I put here, when someone steals um, to, to somebody, uh, something to somebody, um, they tend to feel like very worried about what is going to happen to them. And more in the physical and, and the things that we can see are um, when we um, exceed, as I said, when we exceed all these natural, for example, resources we have and leading us to, to um, consume more than we are uh, or we're supposed to. And um, for example, uh, industries to maintain um, this uh, gain, gaining of, of money. So they, they produce a lot more, uh, wasting a lot of um, things and uh, causing things like air pollution, pollution, chemical pollution, and uh, things, of course, like poor infrastructure can cause things like climate change and a lot of damage to, to our environment. But we can try to improve it. We try to make our environment are a better place by doing little things would lead us to uh, have a great change. Um, for example, um, instilling awareness in, of a healthy environment in children to make them have since the, uh, the younger or earlier age uh, to have this awareness that they have to give uh, a rational use to all these uh, sources they have and or possess, and also by promoting campaigns that um, would make our planet a better place, like uh, removing all the garbage from um, from the from rivers and the seas, and also um, things like planting trees are things like that we see are like little things, but that would lead us to a greater change. And finally, um, as I told you, it can be affected in the mental and physical uh, or psychological way, sorry. We can try to have a great relationship with other, other people, um, respecting their own freedom. And, and in this way, having an equality uh, between uh, every everyone that surround or who surround us. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Marty. Okay, who wants to go next, guys? Not so many volunteers. Okay, let me see. Um, Tamara, Tamara, you're next. Then we're gonna have Ali, and finally we're gonna wrap up with Tani. Okay, physical health. Well, today I'm gonna talk a little about physical health. So what is physical health? Um, basically, physical health is the well wellness of the body and uh, the proper functioning of the organs and systems of the body. Physical health, basically is what makes you feel healthy and like energetic, energetic. 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 Wait, sorry. Um, how, uh, how, how it can be affected in a negative 
way. Okay, first I um, grade physical illnesses because if you have a uh, low defenses, they can be caused like by they can be caused they can be uh, caused by virus and or bacteria. Then we have more tarnesses, tarnes, sorry, because you probably feel like of um, headaches for maybe for the stress or things like that and weakness in the body. Then we have um, how can it be affected in positive way? Uh, balanced nutrition. Of course, obviously it's important that you have a good nutrition like drink water, uh, eat fruits and vegetables because it can, it can help you a lot for, uh, I don't know, um, for, um, Feel for you feel well. Uh, you feel more energy energetic. Uh, it's important you do exercise, strength, strengthening your bodies and muscles. Quality is sleep. It's it's important that you sleep well and take minimum eggs. Uh, or for sleep, reduce risks to your health, improve your mood, and way, ways in which this type of health can be improved. Uh, balanced nutrition, like I told you um, before, good Eating habits, do physical exercise, quality of sleep, uh, have, re have regular medical checkups. It's important that you visit the um, doctor and professionals that, that maybe can help you. And thank you, that's all. Thank you, Sam, that was really good. And now we go for Alec. Hi. Um, well, let's see. I'm going to expose you, of course, what is social health, how is it affected, and how to improve it. So let's start with the basics, with the definition. What is social health? Well, for me, it's everything that is related to healthy relations with friends, family, and the rest of the people. And why do you want to say? Of course, it includes how do we interact with them, how, it, how good is our relationship with them, and well, if it is healthy or not. Also, I think it refers to things that can affect us and make us vulnerable to some things that may affect our health. You can talk about stress. You can talk about maybe abuse in some cases if your relationship, of course, is not healthy, but it depends on the case. Also, it refers to how we adapt to new environments with people and how do we interact with them. Well, for example, if you move on from one city to another and you need to, well, meet new people, it's going to be important for you to have a good social health to be able to feel included in new social groups. Now I'm going to explain in which way social health can be affected in both ways, negative and positive. Well, in negative, of course, in some way that can be affected is an exclusion and marginalization of social circles. For an example, like I said before, when you move from one city to another or when you change from one high school to another, even if you, well, of course, don't have anyone that you know, you need to try to make new friendships or relationships with people. And maybe sometimes people is not that open to Met new people to include persons to their social circles. So it's very hard. It's very hard in some cases. Another thing that happens today a lot and that shouldn't happen is gender inequality and cultural discrimination. That can also be related to the last thing I said. 
in a society like the one that we live in today, that shouldn't happen, but it still happens. And I know from friends that they have, and also that I think that we need to be very careful with what people do we interact or get involved with, because you need to be selective. And of course that you need to really think, oh, I want to be friends with this person. I want to get close. Is this a person that really cares about me? You need to really understand that to be able to have a good social health. And the positive things are almost the contrary from the negatives because I think that you need to be around friendly people. And it's going to be easier for you, for example, when you are new in a place to feel comfortable. If the people helps with it, if the people is open to talk with you and to get to know each other. Also, as I said before, you need to be really careful and selective with people. You need to know when a person is not good for you and well, you need to know when does they stop. And also you need to always try to meet new people because it's basically the only way that we have to feel included and to have a good social health. And to finish, well, I'm going to give you some tips that Maybe are a little bit basic, but it's something that we all have to use and something that we need to implement in our in our daily in our daily lives. Yes, we need to try to put shame aside on many people. Basically, it's something that we need to do always. We need to try to feel comfortable with people. We need to try to really have a group of friends, or maybe not a group, just a person. You just need to like make the first step. All you need to maintain a good and constant communication with people close to you. It's something pretty obvious. It's the only way that we have to maintain a good relationship and to make it last years. Uh, try to surround yourself with people who really appreciate you. You need to be sure that all your friends or people that is close to you will be for you no matter what. So I think it's something very important. And the last thing that I want to say is that you need to get used to live the comfort zone and try to adapt to new environments. You need to, for example, like you said before, if you move on from one city to another, you need to understand that it's going to be hard to just keep your friends. You need to adapt to the new environment and try to adapt to the new people. And that's it. Thanks for your attention. And that was the presentation. Thank you, Ale, that was very nice. And last but not least, we're gonna move to Tani. Okay, I'm going to talk about mental health and let's start for the definitions. What is mental health is a state of mental well-being that enables people to cope with the stresses of life, realize their abilities, learn well, learn well and work well, and contribute to their community. Reminder, when we are mentally held, we enjoy your life and environment and the people in it. We can be creative, learn, try new things and take risks. We are better able to cope with difficult times in our personal and professional lives. Okay, um, some things to improve your mental health. Relax and reduce stress. For example, do yoga or grind, learn books, listen to music. Um, the second one, find ways to learn and be creative and try and discover new things. Pay attention to the present moment. Try no think about the past. And many times we do it and it's something that we can change. 
um, try to get enough sleep, it's important that you feel energetic. So try to sleep at least eight hours. And get help if you need it. Many times we don't ask for help because we believe that this makes us weak. But asking for help is completely valid. We all need it at some point in our lives. And um, some things um, we shouldn't do. First, um, don't feel you have to learn new qualifications or sit exams if this does, doesn't interest you. Um, it's better if you try things that um, like you, for example, that like you, that you know. And um, overuse of social media. Keep in mind that many of the things we see in social media um, aren't true. Regret, you always. Um, you always let you always learn from everything, every everything, every with us a yeah, new opportunity for sleep. As I said before, um, it's important to sleep well and uh, feel comfortable. And finally, rest well. Don't overload your mind. We don't overload your mind because we all need a break. And that's it. Thank you, Danny. That was very nice. Okay, guys. So uh, for the next part, first of all, I want to know how you felt with this presentation. How did you feel presented? Very great teacher. Okay. Yes. Okay, how about your girls? Um, I think that um are important um items. Okay. Tom, do you wanna add anything? No, I think I feel very well. Okay, that's great. Okay, um, yeah, we're gonna have these exercises of having presentations. It can be sometimes that we create them here in class or it can be that I ask them, um, I ask for you to do it at home. Well, you're always at home, but my point is to do it be uh, before class or after class and then bring them next class to present in class. So we're gonna have this, especially because um, for the um, for the TOEIC exam, or any language exam that you actually take that is related to or similar to TOEIC, TOEFL, Cambridge, uh, Trinity, etc. All of those, um, they're gonna be tasted, testing your language ability, meaning the way that you can express and how you express about things. Okay, so a few tips. Um, I did like them. I think they were very nice. Um, things that that I want you to work on, and that's I'm actually gonna give you a homework. Um, so, but before I give you the homework, I need you to try to work on your confidence, okay? So the thing is, you probably know what the word confidence is, but pretty much confidence is to make sure that the way you're speaking reflects that you um, are the master or that you strongly believe what you're saying. For example, um let me give you an example okay let's say that well i don't know if you can see the, this the color of this thing you probably can't but it's actually purple so if if i come and i say okay um tamara do you like my pink phone and tamara is like mm, that's not pink but we're like no it's pink it looks pink and i love this pink you know what because it's just that maybe the angle that you're looking at it from, it's not 
looking that way, but if you look at it like the way that I'm looking at it, it's pink. So in that case, you might think, oh, the teacher is probably drunk. I'm not drunk. But my point is, it's not what you're saying, but the way that you're saying it, how you're selling that idea. So I want you to work on your confidence. I want you to make sure that what you're saying, it, you sound like you believe it. So for example, you could say, let's say that Tanya could have said, you don't need to sleep. Research shows that it's no sleeping is actually better for your health. Even though we're going to be like, what? She must be crazy. But the point is, I want that to sound in your voice. I want your voice to sound like you believe what you're saying, because in that case, then that's going to make me feel like, oh, she's, she knows what she's talking about. I like this. I like that. Okay. So I want you to work on your confidence. First of all, also, uh, that's why we're going to have homework. We're, we're also going to be working on the way that we say things. We're going to have keywords in our presentations. Why? Because our presentations need to have keywords and sometimes no so much text. There is something that I like that some of you did was that you explain that you had the keyword um, and then you were explaining. Um, so for example, I think one of the ones that I remember was Tamara when she said um, having a good diet, I think, or healthy habits. And then she went ahead and she started explaining what could be or understood and healthy have as healthy habits, okay? So that's a really good idea because you're explaining. So you just have something small on the on the slide, but you are expanding, you are elaborating on that specific idea. Okay. Not like you have to go super deep into the topic, but just to elaborate elaborate a little bit more. So whomever is listening to you will be like, oh, that makes sense. And also it's gonna make you look as how can I say like more of an expert. Okay. And um, also, um, I want you to make sure that you're going to be checking the grammar of your presentations. Why? Because some of your presentations had very tiny typos or you were having like something here or there. For example, um, there was one where somebody started with, is the concept, blah, blah, blah. Remember that in English, we never start with the verb right away because it, that's a Spanish. When we say, for example, um, instead of saying it is raining, if we say is raining, that is Spanish because in Spanish, that's considered, uh, that's, considered no, that's called sujeto tácito. Sujeto tácito es cuando el sujeto no está presente. Es, es, un, es un fenómeno que se puede dar en español, pero no en inglés. En inglés no existe el sujeto tácito. Por el tipo de estructura. So we must have always the subject over there. The only scenario where we don't have a, a subject, it's whenever you're giving orders or recommendations. For example, if I say, I don't know, um, Ale, stop eating, I don't know, donuts. Or Tamara, uh, don't exercise anymore. Or in those cases, we're giving orders or commands. Or if I say, I don't know, um, Tani, Tani, bring me a glass of water. So in those cases where you're giving orders or commands, we can start without the subject. But if you're not giving an order, a command, or a recommendation, the subject, the subject, sorry, the sentence must always start with a subject, even if it's it but the the sentence must start with it um and now in regards to which is going to be your homework so for monday you're going to be creating a presentation it can be from five to eight minutes hopefully no less than five no more than eight minutes um where you present something that fascinates you okay so you're going to choose any topic. For example, um, I don't know. I think, Ale, you were the one who likes graphic design, I think, right? Okay. Uh, well, I don't know how much you like it. I'm just going to, in my mind, think that you love it, that you're obsessed with it. So maybe you can come ahead and create something about graphic design. 
and present about it. Again, you don't have to do it. Choose, and this goes for everybody, choose what fascinates you, okay? So for example, in my case, if I had to choose something, I would choose um, neurolinguistics. Neurolinguistics, it's a part of the language that studies how the brain processes learning a new language. There are a lot of tests and a lot of things. I am obsessed with that. I think that is such a cool topic for me. So if I had to create one, I would do it about that because I find that to be fascinating. So in that case, the, the homework for you will be to create a presentation about what fascinates you, okay? It can be anything. It can be, for example, a sports. It can be, an, or it can be in a specific sport, but go deeper, okay? It fascinates you. Why? What about that specific action or thing makes you so interested in that in particular, okay? Questions, comments, concerns? No. Teacher, I have a question when what? you said not starting with the verb, uh, yeah. I couldn't uh, understand it. Sure, no worries. Um, what I was saying, Fabri, is that in Spanish, we have something that is called sujeto tacito. I don't know if you if you remember what that is or even if anybody, anybody remembers that. Sujeto tacito is whenever you can leave the subject out. For example, and I'm going to switch to Spanish. Es muy normal que uno diga, ah, voy para el mercado, voy para el súper, eh, tráigame tal cosa, or whatever. In those cases, no estoy diciendo usted, yo, ellos, no. Solo estoy empezando con el verbo. But in English, eso se hace en español, porque existe este fenómeno llamado sujeto tácito, donde se sobreentiende cuál es el sujeto y por eso no hace falta mencionarlo. In English, we don't have that. For that reason, we must always have a subject. The only scenario where we don't have a subject or where we can avoid the subject is whenever you're giving recommendations, orders, or commands. For example, if you say, I don't know, Ale, stop moving. Um, I don't know, Tamara, stop touching your hair. Tania, um, I don't know, bake a cake. So those are orders or commands that I'm giving them. So in that case, I can just go ahead and start with the verb because it is intended or it is, how can I say, like understood that the subject is you. But those are the only scenarios. O sea, solo cuando estás dando una recomendación, una orden o algún tipo de comando. That's the only thing. And those are usually kept for recommendations. But if you're just starting... Uh, to explain any concept, for example, um, let's say that Tanya, if Tanya had said mental health um, is a, I don't know, a health that is related to blah, 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 with that is, that would be incorrect. Even though we know that it is referring to it, she must write or type it, mental health, column. It is a subject matter that studies blah, 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 blah. So we must always have a subject over there. Better, uh, Pauli? Yes, thank you, teacher. You're most welcome. Uh, Pauli, did you hear about the presentation? Um, yes. Okay, awesome. No, no, just double check. Okay, remember this for this coming Monday, the presentation should take, I mean, the, the speaking part should last between five to eight minutes, no less than five, no more than eight. You're going to have time to rehearse it. So please rehearse it because they later we're going to have ones that are going to be graded. So I want to make sure that you're ready for the ones that are graded so you can get a hundred. Or besides getting a hundred, that you already are mastering these, this thing of um, presentations. There is a very interesting article. I'm sorry, am I speaking too fast? Nope. Yes, maybe. No, okay. Well, you're understanding, which is a good thing. So cool. Um, there is a very interesting article that I like that talks about um good practices when giving an oral presentation. 
I'm going to look for that and send it in the chat. So you can go ahead and look at it whenever you're creating your presentation, rehearse with it, and then on Monday, delight me and delight all of your classmates with your wowing presentations, because I'm sure they're going to be mind-blowing. Okay? Any question or concern before we move to the next stage? Um, just to clarify, is something that uh, uh, passionates me. That you find fascinating, correct. It can, okay. be, it can be an activity, it can be a topic, it can be you decide, you choose. All I want is to see you talking about something that you find fascinating. Because I love when people talk about things that they love because like their faces and everything lights up. So I really want to see you in your area, like in your zone, like glowing and showing all that potential that you have. And also using a second language to do or to express something that you like as much as whatever you're going to choose, which I don't know yet. Okay. Any other question? Nope. Okay. Well. Let's continue. Now, for the following topic, for the well, not topic, the following part. What would you say, guys, if I tell you that happiness, or not, well, yeah, maybe happiness, I think, um, or that the secret to happiness or to constant happiness is to have more fun more often? What would you say about that? Would you agree with me? Or would you think that I'm just crazy? You can say that I'm crazy. It's okay. I won't take it personal. What do you think? Tell me. For what teacher, sorry? That having fun is the secret to more happiness and also to a healthier life. What would you say about that? So if I say, for example, uh, Tani, would you would you believe, or what do you think about me saying that having fun is the secret to a healthier life? Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm crazy? What do you think about that? That goes for everybody. I think that is true. Maybe because if maybe if you um. Um, if you are fine, you are happy uh, because that makes you loud. That is a very good point. Thank you. How about the others? What do you think? I think. I think no. Sorry. Well, I think it's uh, good up to a certain point. Uh, because we have to respect the limits of what we think is having fun. Um, because as in the presentation, uh, what I said, um, we have to respect uh, others, other people's um, uh, freedom. And we have to uh, understand that having fun is um, uh, like, doing things uh, we we like or love um, and enjoying them, but without um, getting out of um, of the line that that like uh, goes um, after what we can and can't do. Okay, there. Ale, go for it. Well, I think that of course, it's not like having fun is not everything that involves uh, happiness. And of course, not everything that involves being healthy. But I think that if we have fun, we are contributing to be happy. And I think happiness is a big part of being healthy. Not the only thing, but a big, big part. So. Okay, fair. Yeah, uh, I, I so think having fun it's a important point, but not is the everything of the happiness. Yeah, it's, it's not like it's not. I I disagree. I'm disagree. Mm, well, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I agree and disagree. 
Okay. That's great. I love that you're, you're saying, I disagree, disagree. I love the challenge, all the points. That's the whole point of the course. Be critical. You can challenge everything. I love that. Okay. But now we're going to watch a video that we like with. Sorry, I was connecting with my other device. So I just wanted to make sure that, because if not, I get like an echo, like a, like a very annoying echo. Um, okay, so as I was saying, now we're gonna be watching a video that talks about why having fun leads to a healthier life. Very important, as um, Tom said, it's not the only thing, but it is vital to be healthier. And we're gonna see why, but, it's not just as easy as seeing it and all like, yeah, it's just like that. No, 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 no. We're going to have, this is not gonna be like a, like a normal practice. It's not like every class we're gonna have like this, but we're going to have a quick quiz in a way, okay? Related to this. So we're gonna watch the video and we're gonna have some questions linked to it. Okay, let me go ahead and send you the link. Okay, there you go. If the link is in the chat. Okay, well, um, was everybody able to open the link? I could teach you. Thank you. Is anybody missing? Okay, everybody there. Okay. Yes. So Okay, let's go ahead and watch the video all together. Can you hear it well? Cool. You know, it's a lot harder than it seems like it should be. Actually feeling alive. And what I mean by that is that we are all constantly doing or at least we're constantly scrolling. But we're not necessarily living. You know, we keep ourselves busy to the point of exhaustion, but we're also languishing. We feel a little bit dead inside. And I think we know that on some level. I think that's part of the reason we keep ourselves so busy and distracted to begin with, but we don't know what to do about it. So I am here to tell you, I figured out what to do about it. We need to have more fun. <laughs> So you might think that you're already having plenty of fun. And that's because in our everyday speech, we often use the word fun to describe anything we do with our leisure time, even if it's not actually enjoyable and, in fact, a waste of time. So for, <laughs> so for example, we scroll through social media for fun, even though doing so often makes us feel bad about like, kind of everything. Or we'll say, that was so fun, we should do that again soon. In response. <laughs> in response to things that weren't that fun and that we don't want to do again, ever. <laughs> but it's not really our fault that we're a little bit fun because even the dictionary doesn't get it quite right. You know, it says that fun is an amusement or enjoyment or lighthearted pleasure. It's something for kids to have in play areas. It makes it sound like it's frivolous and optional. But if you think back on your own memories that stand out to you, as having truly been fun, and I really encourage you to do this. You know, the memories that you would describe as, and forgive me for our scientific terminology, so fun, you're going to notice that there's something much deeper going on. 
I've collected thousands of these stories from people all around the world, and I can tell you it's amazing because when people recount the memories in which they had the most fun, they tell you about some of the most joyful and treasured memories of their lives. So in reality, fun is not just lighthearted pleasure. It's not just for kids, and it is definitely not. Ed, fun is the secret to feeling alive. So today, I want to propose to you a new, more precise definition of what fun is. I want to reveal some of the ways in which it is astonishingly good for us, and I want to give you all some suggestions for things you can do, starting right now, to experience its power for yourself. So the first thing we need to start with、um, is the fact that fun is a feeling, and it's not an activity, and that's important. Because a lot of times when I ask people what's fun, they'll respond with a list of activities that they enjoy. You know, they'll say dancing is fun, or skiing is fun, or I don't know, pickleball is fun. Everyone seems to think that pickleball is fun. <laughs> <laughs> and sure, pickleball can be fun, but we've all had experiences where something's off, and an activity that seems like it would be fun doesn't end up feeling fun. And then on the flip side, we've had experiences where something that doesn't seem like it would be fun at all ends up feeling ridiculously fun. There's an element of serendipity. But when people do have fun, when they experience this feeling, it's actually very easy to recognize because people who are having fun look like they're being illuminated from within. So, for example, here's me and my husband having fun together. Here are some presidents having fun together. Here's Archbishop Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama having fun together. <laughs> Actually, those two seem like they were very often, even constantly, <laughs> having fun together. <laughs> and as you can see in these photographs, true fun produces this visceral sense of lightness and joy. It's radiant. In fact, when I asked my daughter when she was about five years old what color fun would be. She said, "Sunshine." So, what is this sunshine? You know, what is this feeling that we call fun? Well, when people tell me their stories about fun, it's really interesting because the details are all different and often quite mundane, but the energy running through them is the same. And there are three factors that are consistently present to the point that I believe they constitute a new definition, one that is a lot more accurate than what's in the dictionary. And those three factors are playfulness, connection, and flow. So, by playfulness, I do not mean you have to play games or, God forbid, make believe. I just mean having a light-hearted attitude of doing things for the sake of doing them and not caring too much about the outcome, letting go of perfectionism. When we have fun, our guard is down, and we're not taking ourselves too seriously. Connection refers to the feeling of having a special shared experience. And I do think it's possible in some circumstances to have fun alone, and for this feeling of connection to be with yourself or the surroundings or the activity. But in the majority of stories that people tell me about their peak fun memories, another person is involved, and that's true even for introverts. And then flow is the state where we are so engaged and focused on whatever we're doing that we can even lose track of time. You can think about an athlete in the middle of a game or like a musician playing a piece of music. It's when we're in the zone. Now, it's possible to be in flow and not have fun, like if you're arguing, but you cannot have fun if you are not in flow. So, playfulness, connection, and flow all feel great on their own. But when we experience all three at once, something magical happens. We have fun, and that doesn't just feel good; it is good for us. In fact, fun does so many amazingly good things for us that I personally believe that fun is not just the result of human thriving; it's a cause. So, for example, fun is energizing. When people tell me their stories about fun, they glow. It is like a fire has been lit inside of them, and the energy and the warmth that they give off is contagious. You know, so much of life drains us, but fun fills us up. Fun also makes us present. A lot of us put a lot of work into trying to be more present. You know, we do yoga classes, we meditate, and that is all great. But the fact that fun is a flow state means that when we are having fun, we simply are present. There's no other way for it to happen. Fun also unites us. We live in a really polarized world, and as we all know, there's a lot of very serious problems. But when we have fun with people, we don't see them as different political parties or nationalities or religions. 
We connect with them as human beings, and it's worth noting that that is the first step in being able to work together to solve those problems. Fun also makes us healthier. Now, being lonely and stressed out, as many of us have been for the past two years. Disease, but when we have fun, we're relaxed and we're more socially connected. Both of which have the opposite effect. So, it kind of blows my mind every time I think about it this way. But having fun is a health intervention. And then, lastly, fun is joyful. You know, we all so desperately want to be happy. We read books about happiness. We download apps about happiness. But when we are in a moment of having fun, we are happy. So it makes me think that perhaps the secret to long-term happiness is just to have more everyday moments of fun. So how do we do that? How do we have more fun? Well, to start with, do not take the suggestions you will find in magazine articles about how to have more fun. So I, I looked up some of these myself, and I found suggestions that include, and I'm not making these up. Roasted. Together an altar to loved ones who have passed. <laughs> Watch a documentary about climate change. <laughs> And my personal favorite: adorn your table with gourds. <laughs> so those <laughs> those are not good suggestions. Instead, the most effective thing you can do to have more fun is to focus on its ingredients. By which I mean, do everything you can to fill your life with more moments of playfulness, connection, and flow. So here are some ideas for how to do so. So to start with, reduce distractions in order to increase flow. Anything that distracts you is going to kick you out of flow and prevent you from having fun. And what's the number one source of distraction for most of us these days? Oh, thank you. <laughs> It's rhetorical, but yes, your phones. <laughs> Now I wrote a book called How to Break Up with Your Phone. So I have strong feelings about this, but I can guarantee you that you are not going to have fun if you are constantly on your phone. So today, I want to challenge you to keep your phone out of your hand as much as possible, so that you can take me up on my second suggestion, which is to increase connection by interacting more with other human beings in real life. Now, I know that one of the main reasons we're constantly on our phones is specifically to avoid having to spend time and interact with other human beings in real life. So I want to assure you that it is worth it, and it is not as hard as it might seem. So here's how you do it: you start by making eye contact, or thought provoking, but not overly personal or threatening. Something like, "What's something that fascinates you?" or "What's one thing that delighted you today?" And you might be amazed by how good just one little moment of connection can make you feel. And if you do find someone to connect with, maybe ask them to join you in trying my third suggestion, which is to increase playfulness by finding opportunities to rebel. I am not talking about James Dean level rebellion. I'm talking about playful deviance. I'm talking about finding ways to break the rules of responsible adulthood, and give yourself permission to get a kick out of your own life. So, for example, one person told me that some of the most fun she'd had in recent memory happened on a Friday morning when she and some of her friends ditched their work and their childcare responsibilities, tucked flasks into their purses, and snuck out to a 10:30 a.m. showing of the movie Bad Moms. <laughs> <laughs> so, lastly, here's one more thing that you can do today to start having more fun. I am just kidding. <laughs> Prioritize it. That might sound totally obvious, but one of the main reasons we're not having enough fun is that we're not making it a priority. You know, our fun is always at the bottom of the list, and it can't speak up for itself. So I'm not suggesting that you like take out your calendar and make an entry that says, "From 4 to 6 p.m. on Saturday, I shall have fun." That is a guaranteed way to not have fun. But if you know you consistently have fun when you spend time with a particular person, make a point to spend time with that person. If you know there's an activity that really does often generate playful, connected flow for you. Carve out time for it in your schedule. Treat fun as if it is important, because it is. I've been doing this myself for a couple of years now, and it's amazing to see how many areas of my life fun has touched. You know, I'm more creative and more productive. I'm more resilient. I laugh more. Making sure that I am having enough fun 
has made me a better partner, and better parent, and a better friend. And it has convinced me of something that I very much hope I can convince you of as well, which is that my daughter was right. Fun is sunshine. It's a distillation of life's energy, and the more often we experience it, the more we will feel like we're actually alive. Thank you. Okay, guys,、um, were you able to get all the answers? Um, I had some some left, but I couldn't. Okay, how about the others? Do you need to watch it a second time? Yes, teacher, please. Yes, teacher. Sure, don't worry. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't finished. Okay, here we go. You know, it's a lot harder than it seems like it should be. Actually, feeling alive, and what I mean by that is that we are all constantly doing, or at least we're constantly scrolling, but we're not necessarily living. You know, we keep ourselves busy to the point of exhaustion, but we're also languishing. We feel a little bit dead inside. And I think we know that on some level. I think that's part of the reason we keep ourselves so busy and distracted to begin with, but we don't know what to do about it. So I am here to tell you, I figured out what to do about it. We need to have more fun. <laughs> so you might think that you're already having plenty of fun, and that's because in our everyday speech we often use the word fun. To describe anything we do with our leisure time, even if it's not actually enjoyable and, in fact, a waste of time. So, for <laughs> so for example, we scroll through social media for fun, even though doing so often makes us feel bad about, like, kind of everything. Or we'll say, "That was so fun. We should do that again soon." In response, <laughs> in response to things that weren't that fun and that we don't want to do again, ever. But it's not really our fault that we're a little bit sloppy about how we use the word fun, because even the dictionary doesn't get it quite right. You know, it says that fun is an amusement or enjoyment or lighthearted pleasure. It's something for kids to have in play areas. It makes it sound like it's frivolous and optional. But if you think back on your own memories that stand out to you as having truly been fun, and I really encourage you to do this, you know, the memories that you. Would describe as scientific, see much deeper. Going on, I've collected thousands of these stories from people all around the world, and I can tell you, it's amazing because when people recount the memories in which they had the most fun, they tell you about some of the most joyful and treasured memories of their lives. So, in reality, fun is not just lighthearted pleasure. It is feeling alive. So today, I want to propose to you a new, more precise definition of what fun is. I want to reveal some of the ways in which it is astonishingly good for us, and I want to give you all some suggestions for things you can do, starting right now, to experience its power for yourself. So the first thing we need to start with、um, is the fact that fun is a feeling, and it's not an activity, and that's important. Because a lot of times when I ask people what's fun, they'll respond with a list of activities that they enjoy. You know, they'll say dancing is fun, or skiing is fun, or I don't know, pickleball is fun. Everyone seems to think that pickleball is fun. <laughs> <laughs> and sure, pickleball can be fun, but we've all had experiences where something's off, and an activity that seems like it would be fun doesn't end up feeling fun. And then on the flip side, we've had experiences where something that doesn't seem like it would be fun at all ends up feeling ridiculously fun. There's an element of serendipity. But when people do have fun, when they experience this feeling, 
it's actually very easy to recognize because people who are having fun look like they're being illuminated from within. So, for example, here's me and my husband having fun together. Here are some presidents having fun together. <laughs> here's Archbishop Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama having fun together. Actually, those two seemed like they were very often, even constantly, <laughs> having fun together. And as you can see in these photographs, true fun produces this visceral sense of lightness and joy. It's radiant. In fact, when I asked my daughter when she was about five years old what color fun would be, she said sunshine. So what is this sunshine? You know, what is this feeling that we call fun? Well, when people tell me their stories about fun, it's really interesting because the details are all different and often quite mundane. But the energy running through them is the same, and there are three factors that are consistently present to the point that I believe they constitute a new definition, one that is a lot more accurate than what's in the dictionary. And those three factors are playfulness, connection, and flow. So, by playfulness, I do not mean you have to play games or, God forbid, make believe. I just mean having a light-hearted attitude of doing things for the sake of doing them and not caring too much about the outcome, letting go of perfectionism. When we have fun, our guard is down, and we're not taking ourselves too seriously. Connection refers to the feeling of having a special shared experience. And I do think it's possible in some circumstances to have fun alone, and for this feeling of connection to be with yourself or the surroundings or the activity. But in the majority of stories that people tell me about their peak fun memories, another person is involved, and that's true even for introverts. And then flow is the state where we are so engaged and focused on whatever we're doing that we can even lose track of time. You can think about an athlete in the middle of a game, or like a musician playing a piece of music. It's when we're in the zone. And it's possible to be in flow and not have fun, like if you're arguing, but you cannot have fun if you are not in flow. So playfulness, connection, and flow all feel great on their own. But when we experience all three at once, something magical happens. We have fun, and that doesn't just feel good; it is good for us. In fact, fun does so many amazingly good things for us that I personally believe that fun is not just the result of human thriving; it's a cause. So, for example, fun is energizing. When people tell me their stories about fun, they glow. It is like a fire has been lit inside of them, and the energy and the warmth that they give off is contagious. You know, so much of life drains us, but fun fills us up. Fun also makes us present. A lot of us put a lot of work into trying to be more present. You know, we do yoga classes, we meditate, and that is all great. But the fact that fun is a flow state means that when we are having fun. We simply are present. There's no other way for it to happen. Fun also unites us. We live in a really polarized world, and as we all know, there's a lot of very serious problems. But when we have fun with people, we don't see them as different political parties or nationalities or religions. We connect with them as human beings, and it's worth noting that that is the first step in being able to work together to solve those problems. Fun also makes us healthier. Now, being lonely and stressed out, as many of us have been for the past two years, causes hormonal changes in our bodies that increase our risks for disease. But when we have fun, we're relaxed and we're more socially connected. Both of which have the opposite effect. So, it kind of blows my mind every time I think about it this way. But having fun is a health intervention. And then, lastly, fun is joyful. You know, we all so desperately want to be happy. We read books about happiness, we download apps about happiness, but when we are in a moment of having fun, we are happy. So it makes me think that perhaps the secret to long-term happiness is just to have more everyday moments of fun. So how do we do that? How do we have more fun? Well, to start with, do not take the suggestions you will find in magazine articles about how to have more fun. So I, I looked up some of these myself, and I found suggestions that include, and I'm not making these up, roast a turkey. <laughs> Put together an altar to loved ones who have passed. <laughs> Watch a documentary about climate change. <laughs> And my personal favorite: adorn your table with gourds. So those <laughs> those are not good suggestions. 
Instead, the most effective thing you can do to have more fun is to focus on its ingredients. By which I mean, do everything you can to fill your life with more moments of playfulness, connection, and flow. So here are some ideas for how to do so. So to start with, reduce distractions in order to increase flow. Anything that distracts you is going to kick you out of flow and prevent you from having fun. And what's the number one source of distraction for most of us these days? Oh, thank you. <laughs> It's rhetorical, but yes, your phone. Wrong feelings about this, but I can guarantee you that you are not going to have fun if you are constantly on your phone. So today, I want to challenge you to keep your phone out of your hand as much as possible, so that you can take me up on my second suggestion, which is to increase connection by interacting more with other human beings in real life. Now, I know that one of the main reasons we're constantly on our phones is specifically to avoid having to spend time and interact with other human beings in real life. So I want to assure you that it is worth it, and it is not as hard as it might seem. So here's how you do it: you start by making eye contact with someone. Like, look them in the eye. Don't look like in the middle of their forehead, where the camera would be on a Zoom call. All right. <laughs> and you say hello. And if that goes well, you can introduce yourself. And if that goes well, maybe you can ask them a question. Maybe something that's like thought-provoking, but not overly personal or threatening. Something like, "What's something that fascinates you?" Or, "What's one thing that delighted you today?" And you might be amazed by how good just one little moment of connection can make you feel. And if you do find someone to connect with, maybe ask them to join you in trying my third suggestion, which is to increase playfulness by finding opportunities to rebel. Now, I am not talking about James Dean-level rebellion. I'm talking about playful deviance. I'm talking about finding ways to break the rules of responsible adulthood and give yourself permission to get a kick out of your own life. So, for example, one person told me that some of the most fun she'd had in recent memory happened on a Friday morning. When she and some of her friends ditched their work and their childcare responsibilities, tucked flasks into their purses, and snuck out to a 10:30 a.m. showing of the movie Bad Moms. <laughs> <laughs> so, lastly, here's one more thing that you can do today to start having more fun. I am just kidding. <laughs> Prioritize it. That might sound totally obvious, but one of the main reasons we're not having enough fun. Is that we're not making it a priority. You know, our fun is always at the bottom of the list, and it can't speak up for itself. So I'm not suggesting that you like take out your calendar and make an entry that says, "From 4 to 6 p.m. on Saturday, I shall have fun." That is a guaranteed way to not have fun. But if you know you consistently have fun when you spend time with a particular person, make a point to spend time with that person. If you know there's an activity that really does often generate playful, connected flow for you, carve out time for it in your schedule. Treat fun as if it is important, because it is. I've been doing this myself for a couple of years now, and it's amazing to see how many areas of my life fun has touched. You know, I'm more creative and more productive. I'm more resilient. I laugh more. Making sure that I am having enough fun has made me a better partner, and a better parent, and a better friend. And it has convinced me of something that I very much hope I can convince you of as well. Which is that my daughter was right. Fun is sunshine. It's a distillation of life's energy, and the more often we experience it, the more we will feel like we're actually alive. Thank you. Okay, guys. How about this time? Were you able to get all the answers? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, that's wonderful. Let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Okay, so let's go over each one of the different questions that we have over here. Um, if you're ready, finish it. Then you can go ahead and send it. Or do you need some time to write the answers?
I can send it you, to you now. Okay. Go ahead and do so. Teacher, I don't know if you can confirm if you received mine because I think it erased everything I wrote. Okay, what's your email, Pauli? Because I already got two. I have one which is Alejandro because it's Alejandro who says this, but what's your email? Fahevini.com. I got it. Okay, thank you. You're most welcome. Okay, girls, how about you? Teacher, I have a question. If I send you the document, I can see the answers or not? I think at the end, whenever you're going to send it, it gives you the option to send a copy to you. That's in it. Okay. Does it appear? No. Let me see. It's because I'm not sure about one answer.
Okay, guys, I'm gonna, I'm already, I already checked one. I'm gonna check the second one I got. And then we're gonna start going over the answers. Super quick before I continue. With the verb agree, how do you create a question with the verb agree? It's because I've heard some things and I wanna make sure I, I tackle it. Do you say I agree or I am agree? I agree. Why do you don't say I am agree? Like, is it incorrect or what? I don't know. I know that isn't correct. It is incorrect. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But I'm not certain. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna get another word somewhere. Yes, as as Tom was saying, it is incorrect because the verb agree already includes the whole meaning. In Spanish, we say estoy de acuerdo, but in English, agree is everything. O sea, ya solo el agree significa estoy de acuerdo. Entonces, el I am agree es como que se diga yo estoy, estoy de acuerdo. That's why you cannot say it. Y lo mismo para decirlo en forma negativa. No pueden decir, I am not agree. Tienen que decir, I disagree or I don't agree. Those are the only two ways. Okay, let me finish checking with the second one and then we can move. You already got the four of them. Let me check them real quick and send them to you right away. Okay, wait, actually we have another activity which you could be doing while we work on this. Let me go ahead.
Okay, guys, I'm going to send you here in the chat. This is an article online. So what you're going to be doing is I'm going to be sending you into the breakout rooms in pairs. And you're going to go over it like you're going to read it. And you're going to choose six different aspects, okay? The article is called How to Be Happy, 27 Habits to Add to Your Routine. So as a group, for example, let's say that, I don't know, Tani is working with Fabrizio. So you two, you're going to choose six. And I'm going to give you some time to mean, you're going to read the whole thing. And then you're going to choose six to defend them on why you think those six are the most salient aspects or the, or the ones that you think would make the most impactful thing in your life. Okay, or would be the most impactful in anyone's life. Okay, clear. Questions? Nope, okay, let me go ahead and send it to the breaker rooms. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna give you around, it's 27 habits. So I'm gonna give you around, let's take around 15 minutes to read it. And if you need more time, we're gonna see, okay? You can let me know. If you have any question or concern, remember you can always click on the help button that is in the bottom right corner, okay? Teacher? Yes. Um. We need to either just discuss or do a presentation or yeah, you have to do a presentation. First of all, you're gonna read it with your partner. The idea is for you to practice reading out loud. So for example, let's say that Tamara is with Ali. So you two have to read it out loud. You can take turns and read one and one, for example. And after you finish reading together, you're going to choose six, six different aspects that you consider are or the, the six that caught your attention the most okay and you're gonna defend them to the rest of the class on why you think those are the ones that are let's say let's say more salient like they are more remarkable okay better okay yes thank you you're most welcome. Let's say this is almost 8.20, so we're gonna you're going to have until 8.35 to read it and try to discuss them with your partner and choose which of those six are the ones, I mean, which of those, uh, from those, which six are the ones that are more outstanding. Understand that we need to understand that <clears throat> we obviously are different, that other people and and yes, <laughs> uh, other is consider therapy. I think it's important because um has I said in the last presentation um, many times um, we don't ask for help because we believe that um, this makes us with that it is make us with and because we think that it's it's I don't know, no important, no important, and that we can, um, we can, um, teacher, how can I say enfrentar? Face. Face, face. Yes. That we can face um, all the situations alone and that's not completely true because we need that other people 
in some point of our life. And the thing that sleep well is so important, sleep the, at least the eight hours, because you feel more energetic and do, I think if you sleep well, you do um, better, you do the things better. And yes, that's all. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. If I already go for it. Okay, apart from the ones that uh, Tanya said, I can say also that um, seeing friends is something that um, uh, we thought was very important because uh, in this way you can have contact with other people, you can um, um, like discuss uh, with them about uh, something or talk about um, something that um, that you like. And as in the video that uh, that uh, you showed us, teacher, um, it's a great space to to like practice um, the feeling of fun. And after it, um, we also said that exercising is very important because in this way you can have um, your brain and your heart in a very healthy way. You can face things um, with um, like more positively because I I don't know how, why exercising makes you feel feel better um mentally and physically so you can face all those things in a better way all those problems and challenges that, that you have in your daily life and also smiling is very important because that's the way you um tell um yourself that you're um you're you're capable of managing um or of facing something, you are uh, capable of um, thinking and behaving positively, even if you are um, ha having something that is difficult or hard to solve. Smiling is very important to to make your you feel alive inside and to reflect it to others to make them feel um, in a great way also. And, and these were the three ones that, that we also said. Thank you, Fabri. Thank you, Tani. Ale and Tam, I think we're going to have to leave yours for next class because we're already like almost nine. We're missing like one minute tonight. So is that okay if we leave yours for next class? Perfect. Thank you. Yes, because I don't want to rush you. And I do want you to go over them and explain why you actually chose those six. Okay, so in that case, for uh, Tom and Ale, you're going to be left for next class. For everybody, remember that for next class, you have to present the presentation on what fascinates you from five to eight minutes, any topic, whatever that actually fascinates you. Okay, be ready. Quick tip. It's something very important when you rehearse it, or something that could be helpful. It's to record yourself. So when you record yourself, you can actually listen to yourself and see if everything that you're pronouncing, it's properly pronounced, okay? Also, you can see the timing, you can see um, the speed that you're having, everything, and it's actually pretty good. Um, so you can try that. Anyway, um, after this, I'm gonna be looking for the article that I told you about and sending it to you. But without anything else, Abo, do you have any questions before I let you go? Nope. Okay. Well, in that case, I hope you have an amazing afternoon. I will see you until next Monday. So I hope you have an amazing rest of your week. A very cool weekend. A very restful weekend. Take care. Do something fun. Remember that fun is a, a good way of being healthy. And I'll see you on Monday. Take care, guys. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Take care, guys.